Coding is on, so let's move on to C3. And uh, those of you who are enthusiastic learners will have completely read C3 and C4 already, am I right? And totally memorized everything. Uh, okay, C4, I'll bring it later. Um, probably next lesson. Can? So C3, it's on fiber optics, yeah, primarily on fiber optics and the physics of it. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the principle on which fiber optics works. And this principle has three words. It starts with a T. Total internal reflection, yes, correct. And um, total internal reflection only occurs when the light goes from a dense, uh, less dense medium to a denser medium, right? <laughs> yes, correct. It goes from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So if it hits certain critical angle, it will go 90 degrees. But do you think that it actually feels a little bit weird that when it hits 90, when it hits this critical angle, light actually travels along the surface? Of how, how does it look like when you light travels along a surface? Do you, do you actually see a beam of light gleaming across the surface or what? I, I, I'm, I'm no need for answers. Yeah, but just, just wonder. It, it, it feels weird, right? Light going along a surface. So is it in water or is it in air? If it is along... <laughs> you understand how, how... If you think carefully, it, it's kind of like weird. Lah. And if you have never experienced this before, please go for a swim today or tomorrow, go for a relaxing swim, you go underwater, what you will see is that if you go beyond a certain angle, you actually start seeing the floor of the swimming pool. So what you do is that you go into a pool that's deep enough, for some of you probably a 3 meter pool, for some of you a 1.2 meters will be enough. Oh, ow! <laughs> for 1.2 meters, oh, I'm drowning! Okay. <laughs> ow! Okay, so, so what I mean is that 1.8 meters should suffice. If actually if you talk about 1.8 meter pool, do you know that it is actually very difficult for you to sink in? Have you tried sinking to the bottom of the pool before? I can do it, I can do it. Not diving, just just sinking. You will not sink there if you try. Have you have you ever swam? <laughs> when was the last time you all swam? Uh? If you just if you just stay still, right, and then you just let it let yourself, you float. Yes, you will not sink. If it sinks, it's probably because of the chicken dr the drumsticks and <laughs> roti prata they ate two minutes ago. Yeah? You will not sink. Actually, if you want to sink to the bottom of the pool, what you need to do is... No, other than that. <laughs> you blow out air. Yes, correct. You just blow out air. You blow out air, you sink. Yes, it works. Okay? So if you sink all the way to the bottom of the pool, which is like in this case, five meters deep, um, you will be able to see, if you look up, you'll see the sky. If you look further forward, you actually see the bottom of the pool. Why? Because from this point onwards, it, the, the water surface becomes totally internal reflecting. You actually see a mirror surface. Actually, it's really quite interesting to think about it. A water surface that was transparent, just because at a different angle, it changes its nature totally. Yeah, It becomes a mirror. It's actually very interesting. Now, what was discovered is that, not in the syllabus, but if you actually go um, and read up, if you put another surface that is close enough, light can actually go from total internal reflecting, it jumps over to the next medium. If it is close enough, yeah. Somehow, light quantum tunnel into the next one, and then it transmits through here. Somehow. It's not touching, but it's close enough. It will actually just jump over. So not in syllabus, not in syllabus, just, just for you to know. <laughs> okay, let's come back to syllabus. Now, sine theta c is equal to? Uh, well, or something. I forgot. N, yes, correct. N, N. It's 1 over N. But it becomes a little bit trickier if you have region 1 and region 2. So how will region 1 and region 2 be represented in the equation? Sine theta c? The way to go about this is N2 equals to N1 sine 90 degrees. Then you'll find that sine theta C equals to N1 over N2. Cool? Can? I think I will not explain too much about this. Let's apply this. You need to apply to see whether you know how to, um, whether you can internalize this. So let's take a look at the fiber optics in optical fiber. N1 over here is 1.1. N2 over here is 1. Uh, say 1.3 and you send in a beam of light that goes, um, this is air, it goes this way, and it goes this way. This is 90 degrees. So what I want you to find is the angle theta C over here, and alpha. So find theta C and alpha, and state whether alpha 
is the minimum or maximum angle so that light will travel along the fiber. So should we send the light beam bigger than that angle alpha or smaller than that angle alpha so that it will travel down the fiber? So find theta, find alpha, and then state whether that's a maximum or minimum angle. Give it a try. 1.1, 1.3, and then air. 1.1, 1.3, air. So what is the refracting index of air? One. One, yes, correct. Yeah. Give it a try. Is the aircon on? It's on now, you can feel the aircon. Okay. the values I quoted is good enough. There might be a case where you can't find any answers. 57.8, that's for theta c I guess. This is 57.8 or alpha? Theta c is 57.8, this one? No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. So give me an angle for alpha. Thirty-two point two. Can we cross check? Thirty-two point two. No, no. This is thirty-two point two. No, thirty-two point two is this angle beta. It's not alpha. Yeah. Forty three point nine. That looks more like it. Forty three point nine. Correct? Table three. It's fine. Uh. It's last SF, probably because of truncation here and there. It's fine. Maximum or minimum? Maximum. Maximum. So if you go beyond, you cannot transmit light, right? Yes, correct. So you should actually go lower than alpha. So alpha should vary between 0 to a maximum of 43.9. Okay? Okay? Now that leads to a problem. That leads to a problem <clears throat> that you can actually have a range of angles that you can transmit light. Are we done with this? 43.9? Okay? Can. Let me show you what's the problem. <clears throat> it means that if I send light through over here and I send light through over here, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay, I realized ding, ding, ding. A, B. <clears throat> A and B. Which one will reach the end of the fiber first? If you need any further explanation, I'll be very worried. Okay, A will reach the end of the fiber first, right? Now, what's the impact? The impact is this. It means that if I got a pulse of pulse width, not physical width, but the time duration, say one nanosecond, it means that this pulse that comes out over here should more or less be one nanosecond. But do you agree that this will arrive later and will superimpose itself onto this one? So this B will probably be something like this, slightly later. Now, when you observe this light that comes out, you're not going to observe A and B. You're going to observe A and B together. So what you have over here is going to be... So this is probably 1.5 nanosecond. Probably. I'm just giving numbers so that you got a feel. So what's the effect? What's the problem? What, what's the impact on the data transfer rate? Say, for example, uh, if I pack another pulse over here separated by 1 nanosecond, or probably separated by 0 0.5 nanoseconds. Can you see that because this pulse is spread out to 1.5, it will overlap with the next pulse. Will you be able to tell the 100110 anymore? You can't. So it actually causes a limit, <clears throat> upper limit on your data transfer rate. 
And this, this effect is what we call waveguide dispersion. It is in your syllabus, you need to know that it is called waveguide dispersion. It sets an upper limit to the band to the to the data transfer rate that you can transmit. And if you think that this is actually not uh, not possible, it is actually possible right now. The maximum data transfer rate you're talking about gigabyte per second. Gigabyte is ten to the power of nine per second. So it's about nanoseconds. Yeah. So that difference, you must remember that fiber optics travel for tens of kilometers, sometimes even hundreds of kilometers, sometimes across Pacific Ocean, thousands of kilometers. Now, this may be a small effect. This angle over here might be, say, 5 degrees, but over thousands of kilometers, that lengthening of the pulse has effect. Has an effect. So the question is, how do we go about this? <coughs> right? How do we go about this? This is what we call a step index fiber. <clears throat> it creates this problem, which is called the waveguide dispersion. Now, one of the very clever ways to go about this is the graded index. If you look in your notes, you will see that um, this graded index has a refractive index that changes with the distance from the center of the fiber. So this fiber over here, if it is graded, the refractive index goes something like this. So the refractive index is the highest at the center, and then it will be lower at the sides. So what does this, um, what's the effect of this? Do you agree that now, beam A travels slower? The higher the refractive index, the lower the speed of light. Make sense? So this beam will be small, uh, slower. Whereas this beam, even though it goes up and down, what happens is that at this point over here, the refractive index is lower. Therefore, it travels faster. And therefore, it is possible that this path and this path actually reach at the same time. So you compress the beam, the pulse, back into a tighter pulse. So you allow the light to travel faster at the side as compared to at the middle, yes. So it's different media. Um, it's, how they do this is an engineering challenge. Um, it's the same medium probably, but by adding... I don't know whether they actually layer like layer by layer. It is the same medium whether they add impurities to increase the refractive index or decrease the refractive index. I'm not sure how they fabricate this. So it's a gradual uh, decrease. Gradual decrease from the center. Okay. Yes. Um, so but is this... So why do you need to curve it? It doesn't matter. It can be a straight or it can be... You mean why is it like this? Yeah. It doesn't matter. It can be like this. It can be like this. It can be like this. So long as the refractive index at the side is lesser than the refractive index at the center. Can? Um, second point, the path doesn't look like this. How does the path look like in your notes? Yeah, why? As the refractive index goes lower and lower, let's take a look. Uh, when you have light traveling from a denser medium to less dense medium, how does it curve? Does it bend towards or bend away from the normal? Away. More dense to less, more away, right? So this path actually goes like this. It curves. It constantly curves away, 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 away. Then it comes back in. Okay? Yeah. So it's actually a very smart way. But the, the challenge is like what Yading mentioned. How exactly do they create this medium? You need to think about if you are the engineer, how would you have done it? This is theory, uh, it sounds good, uh, but if the engineers cannot create this medium, then it's useless. Yeah? Okay? <clears throat> so um I think technology, that's where technology is very interesting. It's a, it's, a, it's a marriage between science and engineering. The two have to come together to come up with innovation. Now, this is not the one. Uh, this is not the one that we're using right now. The one that we're using right now is what we call the single mode um, fiber optics, which is the third line in your notes. Um, the single mode, basically, it's a very thin, very, very thin. If you create a fiber, center fiber that's so thin, it doesn't allow for any other transmission, any bouncing off except for the one that goes straight through. It's almost like <clears throat> standing wave. You only allow a few states of vibrations that are, is, is, to exist in standing wave. So if your wave is so small, for some weird physics reason, it only allows light to pass through like this. The bouncing off is not allowed at all. And if you are not aware, the person who invented this got a Nobel Prize. Yes. Yes. 
it is engineering, it is the science. I think he came up with the science of it as well, the physics of it, of why it is like this, and then he created... Yeah, I do agree that it's engineering. Even the uh, cosmic background radiation, the discovery of the cosmic background radiation was an engineering project. Uh, MRI machine, it was actually an engineering project as well. So, you are correct. Why was it a water physics? I also don't know. But because of this, we are able to send data rate at a much higher rate. We're able to download videos in seconds right now, rather than hours. I don't know whether you live in my age. I mean, you obviously didn't live in my age. <clears throat> Where the state of our technology is 56 KB per second. 56 KB per second. And you know, when Singtel or Starhub says that it's 10 megabyte per second, it never goes to 10 megabyte per second, right? So when they say 56 KB per second, 0 0.5 KB per second. <laughs> so yeah, we live in those ages. Where downloading a song takes five hours. And then when someone calls, because it's through the phone line, when someone calls, it cuts. Yep. And then you've got to reload everything again. <laughs> so you always download your stuff in the middle of the night, when nobody will call you. Yeah, those were the days. But because thanks to this kind of things, thanks to this kind of thing, we're able to pump it up to one gigabyte per second. What's the highest plan right now? 100 megabyte? Consumers, are you able to go to GB? No, no, as in like op five optics at home. What's the highest? That can go. No idea. Huh? I, 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 I think mine is 100 megabyte per second, but it never reaches 100 megabyte per second. I mean. Is it Wi-Fi or is it um, Okay, it's, it's limited by your fiber optics, that's the one thing. Then it's limited by your router, how fast your router is. <clears throat> and how fast your computer is. Yeah. Most routers can support very high bandwidth now. No problem, it's the fiber optics. Um, yeah. Yesterday, just talking about, hang on, let me, let me, let, I must share this story. Yesterday, just yesterday, I realized how important the internet was to us, uh, to me. I had a fiber optics uh, outage for four hours yesterday. Why? Why? I, I couldn't survive. <laughs> then I realized how important the internet is. Eh? Netflix, hang. It's like, well, the internet, hang. Then I don't dare to use my data plan. Yeah, I use data plan to watch a movie, that's it, really, kaput. Yeah, so, so it was like, my life was different. <laughs> 250, ter 250 terabytes a second. Wow. wow, that's 10 to the power, that's 10 to the power 12. Which means if you take one upon that, that's few hundred femtoseconds. That's few hundred femtoseconds. You must understand how, 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 how amazing that is. That means you must be able to chop, 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 your light signal. 10 to the power of 13 times a second. <laughs> you just take a stodge, uh, on off, on off, on off. Uh. What's the fastest you can do? <laughs> 10 to the power of 13 times a second. Eh. On off, on off, on off, 13 times a second. It's amazing. <clears throat> do we need that kind of speed? What is possible is that we will have autonomous vehicles coming soon. Because to have autonomous vehicles, it needs to transfer real-time data. The location, the environment, and everything. <coughs> autonomous planes in the future. <clears throat> will you dare not fly in a plane where there's no pilot? Um, you still need that person to, to be in case of emergency. Yeah, The pilot is still there. <clears throat> you won't open the door and see the two pilots sleeping there. Lah. <laughs> it's like, hello, Shannon, how are you? <laughs> no, no. Okay, yeah, I think you got a question just now. This one? Yeah, it's just. But what, what, why does it actually like only yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's some deep physics inside. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the same as asking why is it that standing wave, you remember standing wave string, it only allows for this or this or this. Just that this took out to the extreme where, where certain conditions it only allows for this to happen. Yeah. Can? Okay. So what you need to know is this phenomenon over here is what we call waveguide dispersion. When you see the word waveguide dispersion, what's the impact of that? widening of bandwidth, widening of the pulse width, and what's the effect of that? Sets the upper limit on the maximum data transfer rate. Now the other one, other than waveguide dispersion, is what we call the... There's another dispersion, check your notes. Material dispersion, yes, correct. Material dispersion is easier to handle. 
um, but there's still some form of dispersion. That is, if you shine white light, even if you can go straight through, um, if you have white light, you know that white light is comprising of different colors, different wavelengths. So the different wavelengths will have different refractive index. So which one will come out first, red or blue? Uh, red. <laughs> red. <laughs> is it red? Blue or red? Blue or red? How many of you say blue comes out first? How many of you say red come out first? Okay, let's take a look. Huh? Still remember the Newton experiment? Which one at the bottom? So blue has a higher refractive index or lower refractive index? So is it slower or faster? So blue or red come out first? Red, yes. <laughs> red came out, comes out first. Yeah. So which means that you send a pulse of white light with uh, like this, and then you just come out spread out lah, with different colors coming out at different times. Like yeah, different com co different colors come out at different times. <laughs> TikTok logo. Okay, I, I don't. <laughs> different era, different generation. Sorry, I'm still at the, I'm I'm still at Facebook trying to transit to Instagram kinda. I'm caught in between Facebook and Instagram kinda. Yeah, I'm, I'm that era la. I haven't even moved on to Snapchat. Is Snapchat like the the. Even more, no, no. So TikTok is the now the the, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Now how do you prevent this? How do you how do you prevent this? How do you prevent material distortion? You limit the wavelength. You limit the wavelength, correct? You use one color lah. But but you may think that one wavelength means in your world you may think that wavelength intensity in your world you may think that it's like this. Yeah, one wavelength, I got intensity, but it never happens. Uh. In real life, it never happens. If you zoom, 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 uh, it will always look like this. Always. You like it or not, it's always like this. It's physics. You cannot do with this. Just impossible. You'll always be like this. Yeah? And if you go down the reason, it's because this laser that you use is because of transition of electrons from one higher energy state to a lower energy state. Remember this thing called uncertainty principle? Remember this thing called Doppler effect? Electrons moving around, atoms moving around? Yeah, when atoms move around, they shift the wavelength a bit. So due to uncertainty principle, there is a spread of energy for the energy state. And the other shifting factor could be due to atoms moving around in the, in the laser tube itself because it's gas. The atoms may be moving around as it produces. So the shift in wavelength, you always cause this spreading. No choice is physics. So there will always be a theoretical upper limit to how much data you can transfer. Now, whether you can overcome these technological difficulties is new technology. So it depends on whether you can come up with even better ways of doing things to compress more information within a shorter period of time. Okay? But is it possible yeah. to do this to You can always try, but then you need to cool down the whole fiber optics. You need to cool down the laser tube. You need to cool down probably a lot of things. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, fiber optics, um, it, the, the intensity of light decreases along the fiber optics, uh, whether you like it or not. And there are two mechanisms. What are the two mechanisms? There are two mechanisms through which intensity decreases as you send the signal in. One starts with a A, the other one starts with a S. <coughs> attenuation. Attenuation is a general thing. Actually, hang on. One is A and one is S, yes. <clears throat> Absorption and scattering, correct. Okay. And which one is the one that accounts for 95%? Scattering, correct. Okay. You need to know uh, two mechanisms and which one is the main. Um, scattering is the reflection of the laser due to the difference in, 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 in uh, refractive index. Because of impurities, you have different refractive index, light will get reflected off because of these uh, impurities. So 95% is because of scattering. So two main ideas, dispersion, Waveguide dispersion, material dispersion, attenuation, scattering, and adsorption. So four things you need to know. Can that's in your syllabus, ah? Huh? Waveguide dispersion, material dispersion, absorption, scattering. Up to now. <coughs> yes, widening of the beam, losing intensity. Correct. Correct. Um, dispersion. There are two. Waveguide dispersion and material dispersion. Attenuation, there is scattering and absorption. Okay. One is the dispersion is the widening of the band, the, the, the width of the signal. The other one is lowering of the uh, intensity of the signal. Okay. But so for scattering, is it reflect back to 
Reflect back. Yeah, it just reflect back or reflect other places. Depending on the angle that you the light hits the thing. But isn't there only two like ends? No, that's why I say along the tube over here there may be impurities along the way. If there are impurities, the refractive index dif uh, differs. And once whenever you have a difference in refractive indexes uh, indices, you will always have reflection. So it reflect back. You reflect back or reflect depending on whether the plane of the uh, impurity is this way or this way. Oh, so it's yeah? Yeah, it depends on a lot of factors, but basically it doesn't travel forward anymore. Yeah, it travels everywhere. Can? Now, next one that I need to go through with you is this thing called um, do, 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 do. ah equation. There's one equation that I need to know that describes how bad the attenuation is, um, which is dB equals to ten log i over i naught. This is out. This is in. Yes. So how, what does this mean? Say for example, um, if I quote, usually it's quoted in this way, uh, that um, if I got the input intensity I in to be equals to uh, 30 milliwatts and I out, I want the I out to have a minimum value of 0 0.05 milliwatts, uh, most likely it is determined by the sensitivity of your sensor. Yeah, if your sensor has a minimum detectable intensity, you need to have this. Anything lower than that, your signal, your sensor wouldn't be able to detect anything in there anyway. So it's useless. So say for example, I'll give you examples. Huh? Intensity, this one, this one. And the attenuation for fiber optics is always given as say something like this. Say for example like this. So the, the fiber optics say, for example, a certain kind of fiber optics has a attenuation factor of minus 0.5 dB per km. So what's the minimum or what's the maximum length of the fiber optics that I can have before I need to have a booster station to boost up the signal again? So how do you go about this? This is what you do. Minus, um, you go for uh, dB equals to 10 times log 0 0.05 divided by 30. Can someone punch in the calculator and find out what is this value over here? 10 log my 0 0.05 divided by 30. Negative 27. So this is the maximum attenuation that I can suffer before I need a booster. But the cable attenuates 0.5 dB per km. So how do I find the length? Exactly, you take this divided by this, you'll get the length of the cable that you need. The maximum length before you have to have a repeater station. So it's about 55.6 km? Yeah. yeah. So every 55.6 km, you need to have a repeater station. What is the wireless station? Sorry? What is the station there? It's a it's booster station, repeater station, basically to multiply your signal up again. Yeah. It got lower, 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 lower. Until it's too low, you need to boost it up again. Then it gets lower, 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 lower then you boost it up again. Yeah. Um, the, okay, probably from like this, from like this, you will get something like this. So if it gets too low, your sensors will not be able to detect. In fact, the sensors may not be able to tell the difference between a signal and noise. Yeah, it may not be able to tell the difference between this signal and the noise that comes in. So you need to push it up again. Probably it senses and then it sends another signal. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So it's actually no longer the same signal anymore. You absorb and then you transmit another signal. Can? I think anything that's under log scale. Yeah, yeah we use decimal. Yeah, it's a log scale. Can? And that's basically about it. The last section, which is on the comparison between coaxial cable, copper cables, and fiber optics, that one is factual. You can go and read it out on your own. Okay. Fiber optics has been around for the past half a century. Technology hasn't changed much. Huh? Yeah. So what's the next wave of technology? Um, we don't know. A lot of people talk about quantum computing. A lot of people talk about a lot of interesting stuff, but nothing has come concrete yet. Uh, so let's see what's the next wave of technology. Ken? Uh, yep. Oh, this is basically the, the figure usually quoted for how 
how much the cable decreased the signal for every kilometers. Yeah, so this is yeah how they code it. Ken, right, can you press the button to stop the recording? Thank you, um, Derek.